Finishing. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Matlore's Ultimate Gill. This lure here in the smaller size is actually the uh, first review I did. Uh, that was about four years ago now, 2012. I was reviewing the baby version of this, the U2 Gill. And I'd like to revisit it. It's going to be the first product that I have revisited um, for two reasons. One is because it really is an exceptional product on the market. Um, and second <laughs> is because looking back on that video, uh, I have evolved, uh, matured, and uh, my I, this review is going to be a little bit more nuanced, where I kind of came out swinging on that last one. Uh, this one here, I have a different perspective, and I'd just like to share that with you guys. So uh, the Matt Lures Ultimate Gill is a obviously a very, very beautiful lure. It's a very effective lure. It has a proven track record for success, and I'd like to give you a closer look at it and uh, show you what this lore is all about. Okay guys, so here is the Ultimate Gill and I'm going to put it out. I do have a few different colors and configurations for you. This one here is a male gill and that's in the boot tail. This one here is a female gill and as you can see that's in that flat tail. Put her off to the side. Here's um, a color that's on Tackle Warehouse. It doesn't look so different than the male heel here, but in the water, these fins actually pop quite a bit more. This is called a Tackle Warehouse. It's a custom color. It's called a Baby Gill. Um, and I'm not sure why the Baby Gill, but basically the fins are just a much lighter and they're a chartreuse, also the tail here. Again, this one pops more in the water than it does here on the tabletop. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, an older version. This is the previous generation from a few years ago. And basically, guys, another reason I'm revisiting this is because not that long ago, I reviewed this guy, the Huddleston Bluegill, which we're going to roll in in just a little bit and do somewhat of a comparison. But in my review of him, uh, I was using this as my reference point. Um, I didn't have actually any of the full-size Ultimate Gills. I had a few of the smaller ones, but when it came to the full size, I only had this one here, which was an earlier design of uh, Matt, Matt Servant from uh, Matt Lores. And he contacted me and he said, you know, so much had changed that uh, he would have appreciated it if I would have reviewed the most uh, recent version because a lot has been, uh, been upgraded and improved. And in fact, that is the case. They're similar in that they're bluegills, but in terms of construction, they are kind of night and day. The new one is such an evolution from the previous generation. So that's kind of part of it too as well. If you guys have seen that or if you come across that, I do want you to know that this is the latest version and that these old ones, while very, very good in their time particularly, have been improved upon. It's one of the things I like about Matt Lores is that he's not, um, he's not uh, happy just to you know, leave things status quo. He's constantly seeking to improve his lures, whether the soft lures, making them more durable and swimming better, or even some of his hard lures, which I actually have back here, I may roll in, uh, and improving them as well, the resins, the paint jobs, things like that. Um, if you haven't already gathered, Matt Lures is a company that I do like. I think it's hard not to like them, or, or him. He makes incredible products. They're very unique, and certainly some of the best looking products you could find in the swim bait market. So anyway, that's just another reason that we're going to be uh, kind of rehashing this review here of the Matt Lures Gill. All right, so these are the... Uh, configurations. These are the colors. Let's take a closer look and uh, talk some more about it. So the essence of the Ultimate Gill is just that. I really do think that it's a very appropriately named product. It is the Ultimate Bluegill. Um, I mean just look at it from all angles. You have things like here's these clear pectoral fins, which are actually molded in so that they come away from the body, they're not stuck flat against it. You can see how soft and limber it is, this thing has great kick. You could also see it's a boot tail, so this is going to have a little bit of a faster kick. It's different than like a Huddleston with those vortex tails, which are more methodical. Uh, this one's a little bit of a faster kick, uh, but in terms of looks, it's really unrivaled. Um, these are as, as close as you're going to get in a soft lure to actually throwing a, a real bluegill. Uh, some other things to note guys, you'll see it has a top hook configuration and that is the only configuration. He 
does not offer a weedless model. There is a hook hanger down here. You kind of see that if you do want to run it with a, a bottom treble. I guess if you wanted to, you could snip this off uh, if you so chose, but you can put a bottom treble on there as well. They come in one sink rate, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. On the site, he references uh, two feet per second, but I'm pretty sure that was the older one. I feel like this one, when I dropped both these in the water, this one sank quite a bit faster. This one, while I don't know the number, I'm going to guess it to be about a foot a second. To me, it has a nice kind of slow, methodical drop. And when I cast it out, if I keep my rod tip high and do a pretty snappy retrieve, I mean, not burning it, but if I go pretty quickly, I can actually keep this on top and I could wake the surface quite, quite easily, quite readily. I can have that tail kick and it puts out a nice little uh, disturbance in the water. It's also very easy if you see something in the water, if you are subsurface, to kind of bring it up to the top and I will even just, you know, kind of bring it up over lily pads and stuff like that. Of course, the exposed hook version is not weedless, but it is kind of easy to kind of skip it and to get it over the top of things. Uh, when I'm coming across timber, it does come across them, across the top pretty well. So, uh, not weedless, but, but pretty dynamic in, in what you can do with it. The hook is a pretty substantial hook. I'd like to say that that's, ooh, I'm not sure, maybe Matt can chime in. It's got to be at least a 4 up, maybe a 5 out hook, and you do have a nice amount of bite there. So a hookup ratios on this lure are excellent. In addition to the boot tail, like you saw, we also have the flat tail here. This one is considered the, the jig model, and this is for, for those of you guys who, who want to bed fish, you're not going to need the action of the boot tail. You just want something very realistic. And also, this here is so kind of loose and pliable that when you drop these in, Oh, by the way, they're weighted such that when you drop them, they just sit on their nose like that. Uh, Matt has weighted them uh, intentionally that way so they look like they're just feeding on the bottom. They don't roll over, they just kind of do one of these deals. And as you can see, you can imagine if this is the water, those fins add kind of a secondary action here. It looks like it's a little bit alive. They're not going to be very stiff and taut in the water, so that flat tail makes it a little bit, you know, gives it a little bit more life in the water when you're just kind of moving this along bed fishing. So it's a fantastic offering um, for that technique. <clears throat> In addition, we have smaller ones. Put them side by side. I guess let's put two boot tail models side by side. You can see it's bigger, but not terribly bigger. Um, in my opinion, I usually think if one is going to bite one, it would bite the other. But uh, there is a difference in size. Okay, a little bit more substantial. This one you could certainly cast a lot farther. The larger one here comes in at about two ounces flat. This one here I believe is one or 1.25. So there is a difference in terms of casting. Either one you can use on a, a heavy action rod. And this one you could probably do even as a medium heavy action rod. You don't need dedicated swim bait gear. Um, this one at two ounces, you do want to kind of take it easy if you don't have a heavy, heavy rod but you don't absolutely need the heavyweight rod to fish either of these, although it is highly recommended because when fishing these you are usually pursuing some of the bigger fish so the heavier rod is advisable as well as heavier line. These small models here I don't have any to show you but he also offers yet another configuration these are actually offered in a floating model which ditches the top hook and has only a treble on the bottom which of course would make sense for a floating model I think that's a fantastic option. I mean, you don't have to fish too long to know that bluegills, a lot of times, particularly at night, they kind of just sit there and hover. They kind of, I don't know if they're kind of in a dormant state, but they just hover a couple inches below the surface, just sitting there. And that is a fantastic technique, is to get one of those floating ones and just kind of dead stick it. You know, cast it next to a lily pad uh, edge or um, a grass line or next to a dock and just kill it. And just the subtleness of this will have it kind of moving and ticking. The fins are there. you got to imagine the fish looking at it from the bottom. I mean, they're seeing a very, very realistic profile of a bluegill. There's nothing generic here. This is not a generic swim bait. This is an absolute kind of taxidermy quality imitation. So in terms of a dead sticking lure, very, very viable. Because with you doing nothing, the fish can nose right up to it, and it still looks absolutely believable. So that floating model is available on the uh, on the smaller ones. Uh, a few different colors uh, that we don't have here. Uh, there's also a red ear model. I believe there's a crappie model. He offers one. I think that's in like a bright white, just a very kind of pungent white color. 
And uh, I guess that's pretty much it in terms of the aesthetics and, and the general overview. Uh, just for kicks, guys, I, I love, love, love my Matt Lores Hard Lores. And you could very quickly see the family resemblance. This is called a hard gill, basically just his hard version of the soft gill. Um, these are sometimes available. Actually, as I'm recording this, these are available right now, which is a rarity. If you guys ever want to pick up <laughs> one of the best lures you could possibly use, and, and really a, um, a showstopper as well. It's almost like a museum piece. It just swims awesome. It looks awesome. It's incredible. You got the hard gill. I just figured I'd show you there. You could definitely see the, uh, the family re resemblance in the Matt Lores line. Alright guys, so uh, next what I'd like to do is compare it to uh, the new kid on the block uh, that just came out and there's a lot of interest on him, that being the Huddleston Bluegill. So let me pull him out and let's take a look at the two side by side. Alright guys, so like I said, I have a dedicated review on this guy. I'm not going to go into crazy depth, but I'd like to compare them as I did, like I said, in that previous video, but I was comparing it against the previous version of the, uh, the Matt Lores Ultimate Gills, so I'd like to do a more appropriate review here with the latest version. The real defining difference is the hooks. That's, that's really one of the main things. The Matt Lures, as you can see, there's more detail. He truly does go for the taxidermy level, every last scale, fin. He represents it as best that can be possibly done to living thing. The Huddleston is superb, don't get me wrong. It is superb, but it just doesn't have that absolute level of realism. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's going to make a difference in terms of fish striking. I, I, I don't believe that. Um, these things represent a bluegill well enough such that if a bass wants a bluegill, totally going to strike either one. But that difference in realism is there. Um, like I was saying, the main thing, though, is the hooks. The Huddleston offers you something very unique in that you have this weedless configuration. And at the time of filming, that is still the only configuration. They came out in this way, and they don't offer an exposed hook yet. The Huddleston also offers rate of falls, which is something they do pretty much across the product line for, for everything, the Huddleston trouts and everything else. This, they offer this in a rate of fall 5, which means it'll fall 5 feet in 10 seconds, and a rate of fall 12, which means it falls 12 feet in 10 seconds. So basically like a fast sink and a medium sink. The Huddleston, as I was mentioning before, comes in only one sink rate. Uh, again, guys, this isn't necessarily a negative. It all depends on how you're going to fish it. And I think a lot of people are going to fish a bluegill kind of in bluegill territory, which is generally pretty shallow and close to cover. So the fact that it doesn't sink ultra quick is not such a big deal. And realistically, if you want to get it down, you can weight it. Um, I don't know how much it would affect the swimming action or I guess how this thing is canted in the water. But if you want to put like a little tiny weight here, it doesn't take a lot to change the sink rates on these, these uh, soft plastic swim baits. You could probably put, you know, a tenth of an ounce here, and at that point it would be a rate of full 12, I'm guessing, something like that. Um, what else do we have? The tails. A lot of people feel that the boot tail is more appropriate for warm water and summer fishing. Now, definitely it's going to catch fish all year round. Don't think that it's limited to just one time of year. But when people who have been doing this for a long time... When they weigh in on it, the uh, swim bait fishermen who have the years and years of experience, the general consensus is the boot tail is more for summer. Reason being is because a boot tail moves quickly. It's just that simple. It's just the dynamics of how it's, it's engineered. It has a very fast back and forth. And speed and moving quickly is usually associated with warm water. The fish are generally more active. The Huddleston uses the vortex tail, which is what he uses in his trout and pretty much everything he makes. It's a different style. This is a more slow and more methodical uh, action to it. Um, the inverse is also true. It's not like you have to use this in cold water. You absolutely can use it in warm water. But there is that, that distinct difference in the way that they swim. Um, what else can we talk about here, guys? Uh, let's talk about durability. The Matt Lures, the new version, like I said, this is kind of a rehash because this old version here the insides were very kind of skimpy. The hook hanger assembly and the weight wasn't really attached to very much. It was just kind of molded within the plastic, but you didn't have to do too much. Like one or two fish and it wanted to rip out. Uh, this one here is a whole kind of plastic unit that actually has these little ridges on it. It offers a lot of surface area and it's not just one small kind of sharp metal object. It's this kind of plastic 
um, kind of like a cylinder in there that just occupies more space. I also want to call your attention to, and I'll just probably roll in the clip here, um, and this is via Matt Allen of Tactical Bassin, which is an absolutely fantastic site if you guys want to get into the swim baits. Uh, he's a real guru on this. I'm just starting to learn, but you can take a lot from Matt Allen. He has a great video. Basically, guys, if you slice this down the middle, before you even fish it, that's the key. Don't wait till you get a bite. Get it out of the package. I know it seems a little weird. Slice it down the middle with a razor blade. Open it up. See that plastic assembly in there and super glue the heck out of it. Hold it back together. Wait for it to dry. Get yourself a bottle of Mend It and mend it shut. And that Mend It does really make it like new again. And this will last so much longer than if you just fished it stock. It causes the, the whole body, the whole plastic or the rubber to adhere to that inside material. Whereas as of now, it's just in there, but it's not glued to the body. Once you glue it to the body, it's very very durable. It makes a huge difference. Uh, a few of my early ones got tore up and once I became aware of that I started doing it and it's it's immediate. I mean it just it's just not getting torn up anymore. Uh, but going back to durability and the whole comparison guys, the Huddleston does not have that. It's just the basic kind of jig hook assembly. There's really not a whole lot for it to grab onto and uh, in my testing of these I did have the hook just kind of fly out of one and I had on the other one the whole assembly kind of start to wiggle out of the nose so uh, durability definitely goes to the mat lures. Um, let's see if I can think of anything else here guys. I think that's pretty much it that I want to talk about here on the tabletop. Uh, these are both great offerings. You have the real decision you want to make is if you want a weedless offering if you're going to be fishing distinctly and almost solely in heavy heavy slop and stuff where you can't have the exposed hook. Uh, versus the higher hookup ratio of the exposed hook model. We'll get this guy out of here. So that's it guys. This is the Matt Lures Ultimate Gill. And like I said, I really, really love these things. Um, they've been around for a while. You can go to Matt's homepage and see the monster fish that have been caught on them. You know, it's not the biggest lure in the world, but one of the things about bluegill lures is that huge bass uh, prey uh, on bluegills, right? And bluegills typically don't get that massive. It's not like when people throw trouts and you know other lures like that. That's just generally a bigger forage fish. Um, lots and lots of monster bass are taken on these relatively compact swim baits just because of what this is representing. It's representing a bluegill, and big bass like to chow down on bluegill, and this is kind of like the perfect size. So. So that's it guys, gorgeous, gorgeous lure, swims great in the water, truly the ultimate gill. Uh, right now guys, I'd like to take it to the water, and I have some in-water clips for you. You can see how this thing swims, it really is it's quite nice. And uh, also we have some fish catching action, didn't let me down. I'm an East Coast New Jersey angler, and uh, I got a nice high four pound fish, and cracked a six pounder this year, both on the ultimate gill. So uh, let's take it out to the water now and take a look.
Randy Man. I said, Randy Man. Man, did you think it was funny? I was like, what the fuck is Randy Man? I was like, oh, Macho Man, Randy Savage. He's like, yeah, same thing. Yes. Yes, not even close. Yes. Good fish. Good fish. It's on the heavy action rod, too, dude. We got a good one. We got a good one here. Hopefully, I have them good. Stay up. go. Wow. Woo, here we go guys. On the Matt Lures Ultimate Gill. Doing his job. Coming up with uh, finally a quality swim bait fish here in the summer. It's been, a, it's been a tough grind. First good fish in a long time. And uh, happy to get one here on the, the real nice Ultimate Gill. Take a look at that there. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Quality fish. That one should break five. You can see on there, different angle. The ultimate gill. It's the full size one. It's got the chartreuse fins. Uh, tackle warehouse color, actually. Doing its job, man. It's been a slow day, but finally, nice quality swim bait fish. Awesome. Like, it was like perfect opportunity. I guess the bur the birds were just chilling on the, the bushes and eating bugs or whatever. And the bass were keen in on it, huh? Yep. They were like, hey, this is and this is the it. best deal we got going. He won the tournament like that on the last day of the tournament. Who has a bird lure with them? I've seen some in the swim bait world, but it's like they're all handmade. And... There's the flipping the bird one. Yeah, that's kind of, well, yeah, that looks like a bird, sure. It's like kind of like on the frog. Basically, is a frog, just with, yeah, with the skirts of looking the like a bird. Of the yeah. yeah. Flipping the bird. Pretty crazy, though. I guess they'll. they'll there we go. Fish on! Fish on. Can you get the uh, camera for me, dude? Camera? Yeah. Just uh, hit on and then the red button. The movie button? Huh? Yeah, the red button on the back. Yeah. Go guys. On the East Coast, New Jersey stud. On the hard gill. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. It's a quality fish right there. Usual grind guys. The fish most of the day. That one bite a day, that's what you're trying to get. Another quality fish. See it there? It's on that uh, ultimate full size gill. Just in the corner of the mouth. Just barely at him. When you crank it, does it start to rise back up or stays down? Oh, fish. Do you want? I think it is. 
I'm the worst. Yeah. Dude, he was just there. That is not the same size as mine. Booyah! Matt Lures, baby. Ultimate gill. I got clips in here from the same time last year. That'll probably be the previous clip. And then, uh, that's a nice fish right there. That's probably a high three, low four fish. That was funny. I look horrible in that clip because I cast it and as soon as I picked it up, it was just, just mush. There's weeds all in here. Never felt a strike. And the whole time bringing him in, he just was lethargic. Look at that, right in the corner of the mouth. Ah, All right, guys, just a different angle here. Buddy on the uh, on the ones and twos there. Solid fish. Just gotta take that out. And that's that uh, ultimate gill doing its job in the fall. Been a killer here in New Jersey. Coming through in the clutch with some quality, uh, quality fish this time of year. This girl here is pretty healthy. Right, we're just gonna get a weight on her now. Take the uh, lure out. All right, guys, you tell me. All right, I just heard the beep. Frank, what do we got? Four four. Four four. All right. We'll take fours. Big fours, not the biggest fish, but solid swim bait fish on the ultimate gill. Those look so big when they swim away. <laughs> yeah. In the water, you're like, oh, it's a six or a seven.